in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel hello guys welcome back to sas word service now this is part of service now four minutes video for developers this is the next lesson of series of rest integration in service now in this lesson you will learn how to create an outbound rest message record in service now now this is my personal developer instance so let, let's say let me let me start with the scenario let's say you have to integrate two service now instances now in order to show you this demo i'm going to use two personal developer instances so if i if you will see over here this is my one instance and if i go to here now this is my second instance so let's say we will treat uh, this one as our primary instance and this one as our secondary instance now this primary instance basically whenever maybe let's say i have to uh, i have to integrate this primary instance with this secondary instance so in that case i have to create a rest message record over here and how exactly I will do that? I will create that REST message record and have to put the information of the web service provided by the second instance. That's what we do and that's what we just learned in our previous video that in order to connect to this particular instance, I have to put the information in primary instance by creating that REST message record. So what we will do, we will start by creating a new REST message record so that we can basically uh, connect to that secondary instance. So what I will do, if, if I go to uh, web services, so you will find this REST message module under web services. So that is system, I would say system web services. So we have this system web services, you can see. Uh, you will see here under outbound, you will see this rest message. Now this is for outbound rest message. If I will click over here, it will open the basically out of the box module in my system. As of now, you can see it has only four records in this particular instance. What I can do in order to create this, I just have to click new button over here. So if I will click on this new button, it will open up the form. Now here it is asking me a lot of details. Now what details these are? Now these details should be from this system. But what, what details I need to give? For that we have to basically get the details from this system. So what we will do? We will go to REST API Explorer. And that's how I can get the details of this instance because that's out of the box. So if you will go to REST API Explorer, and what we will do, we, will, we just want to maybe uh, fetch incident data in that instance, in that primary instance. Let's say that's that's one of your uh, one of your use case. So I will just click on Explorer. And what I will do, I will select over here uh, Retrieve Records. That's fine. We can just keep Retrieve Records, and I will provide the table over here. I will. Because I'm going to uh, create those details so that I can put in that instance. So I will put it over here. And then I have, uh, let's say, I have, uh, I, I will do one thing. I have this table name selected. But I also want to maybe uh, provide some of this uh, query parameters. Because that's what I can put it in my another system. So let's say if I come over here. I will, um, maybe I will open all incidents. If I will have all incident data in this instance, and I will just try to filter it because I will that get uh, basically query. Uh, let's say I just need to, I just need to fetch the data related to maybe mm -mm, this one. If I do show matching, let's say I, I do like this and I will do one thing. I will copy this query. So I will do copy query. I will go to my API Explorer. I will paste it over here. And then if I go a little bit bottom, you can see I have this request format, response format. And as of now, authorization is send as me. That's fine. I will just click on send. If I will do that, this will definitely return the response for me. 
in this rest. So you can see I have got the same incident over here. What I will do, I will provide these details. What details? Over here. From We will provide these details from here to our primary instance. So what I will do, I will just copy this one till here. Let's say I will do like this. That's it. Till, till here. And then I will come over here, come to my primary instance. And here I will do, uh, let's say, um, get or maybe integrate, integrate with another service now. Now here I have to provide the endpoint. Endpoint I can just give like this. Here I have authentication. Now, as of now, because I can't connect to that third party system, that's another service now instance until I provide any kind of authentication. So what I will do, I will use basic for now. Now I have to use, so you can see, I can select OAuth 2.0 or I can select basic as well. So let's say I, I have to select the profile. What I will do, I will provide the username password. So I have to select the uh, in, basically username and password for that instance. So let's say maybe I will, I will just mention over here I will create a new one I will do dev um, dev 70731 and here I will provide the we will do it with basically admin account let's do that with admin I will provide the password which you can't see uh, and I will just click on submit I'm done and I will go to HTTP request now here you can see it is asking me for headers I'm not going to provide over here because we will provide in our get method. So for this rest message record, I'm done. So I will just click on save. So you can see this rest message record is created. Now, if I go over here at the bottom, you will see the, there will always be one method will automatically be created. Whenever you, you will create a new uh, new REST message record, you will always see that the default method will be created and it will always be get. So you can see here we have default get and it has selected get method as well. So if I, if I just click on this, you will see those details as well. So now here we will provide more details now. So as of now, I just created the rest message record. Now here are the main details which I have to provide so that it can perform the operation in another instance. That is your third party application. So in that case, I will select in authentication. I can just select this inherit from parent. If you want another, you can also select that. It's totally up to you as per your requirement or it's up to the uh, developer administrator how you want to configure it. So in that case, I will maybe here we will go to http request uh, our url will be still still be the same because that's what we have it for get and if i go to http headers now what headers i can put over here if i go to my another application here in this is you can see headers and that's a, i would say uh, that's a great functionality provided by service now it's very easy as a developer you don't have to look uh, things from scratch it automatically giving you on your plate ready i think it has already cooked it and giving you giving you on your plate so you can see we have this headers i have to add these headers over there so let's say i will do accept and if i select accept and that means i only accept format which format that is over here that is json if you want to accept in xml that is also you can mention over here so and I will show you here as well. Let's say I here you can see like request format. I have maybe response format. I will make it XML. Let's say. And if I click on send, you will see that I am getting response in XML. And that's what you will see the change except. So that means. I will accept the response in XML. That's the reason. And what type of data I want to send it to you? I want to, I will send it to you in JSON. And that's what you can mention over here. But this is get and it's it basically here. You don't have to put any kind of request body. So even if you don't mention uh, content type, I think it won't matter. So what I will do, 
I will just mention accept and I will go here. So here we have application uh, slash JSON. And this is done for headers. We are done. Now we have query parameters. Have we added any query parameters? Answer is yes. The query parameters we have starts from here. The first one is, let's copy this. Put it over here. You have to put the value and that value is like this. I will put it like this. Then I will also select this limit. I can do like this. And I, let's say I will just put one. Even if you will put 10, it won't matter because as of now only 10, uh, one racket will be uh, returned. So you can see I have mentioned 10. Now I can just click on save. So if I click on save, our get method is ready. So I don't have to put any other detail. Here you can see variable substitution, but we don't have to use it right now. This is for dynamic data. And in our, in our uh, I would say further le lessons, like subsequent lessons, you will see that I will be using it because I will be integrating properly end to end with some other application that I have planned for uh, YouTube integration as well. So in, in uh, next sessions, you will see uh, integration with YouTube as well. So here I will not use this, but what I will do because this lesson is specifically that how you create a rest message record. So what I will do quickly, I will do a test. So as of now, I have given the parameters as I have given the headers. I have given the authentication details. Now I will click on test. Now this test is basically to use whether you are able to get the data or not. If you will click on test, you will see the results, absolutely. Did you see that? Test is successful. How did we come to know that this is successful? The reason behind it, we got this 200 status. Now this code will always identify whether the connection was made successful or not, or whether the operation you want to do, whether it was successful or not. This will also define the error. So you might go get some different, uh, different other uh, codes as well status like 401 maybe. Those codes, they, that means there is an error in the system. Now uh, basically, if I talk about these uh, web services code, HTTP codes, you have different codes for different errors for example 401 not connected you have 500 uh, error it's like internal server error and there are other as well but if I talk about 200 and 201 that means 200 says that hey I was able to connect that application and 201 says that hey I was able to create the record in that another application but that's what you basically you will be able to identify here you can see I'm getting the data in JSON and this is the same incident it's not any other incident it's same uh, zero uh, the one um, let me let me check as well if I quickly check you can see this is the same instance and if I search for number let me search for number quickly absolutely you can see this is 002 over here if I come over here this is again 002 that that's how you create a rest message I will still do one thing just to show you another type of test if I come over here and I basically change this HTTP request parameter so here now headers not parameter in headers if I change this to XML what will happen you will see the magic if I click on save and this time I click on test the result the response will be totally different so if I click on test so now you will see the response is in XML format so basically here it says the default get here the status here the endpoint which you are hitting here the parameters which you are sending here the content 
what content you are sending to that third party system as of now it just gets so i'm not sending any content and here we have response that what response you are getting after hitting that system what response so see this is another instance and this is that this is again different instance but i'm able to get the racket the details of another system into this system and that's what integration is all about but this is how you create REST message record in ServiceNow.